right, welcome back, and we'll continue our discussion in uh, this stress transformation in Moore circle. And right now, we are going to um, to apply the Moore circle in finding the principal stresses and the principal axis, the maximum machine stress. If um, we have a problem that's actually um, uh, that's actually um, or a, a system or a material that's subjected to combined loadings. So this is actually our the same problem that we did in uh, problem 4.2 in the previous videos. But right now, I'd like to focus on this one, on the B and C. Okay, so we don't need to solve to resolve for the um, for the stresses right here, but rather uh, once we have once we have uh, solved the combined stresses. Then we can arrive into a, um, I think, we can arrive to a stress point. So there's going to be a normal and shear stress in this uh, stress point. So we are asked to find the principal, uh, principal axis and principal stress at k. So this is our k. This is our h right here, and we are just asked to solve for this. Okay. So just to have a review of what we did, um, if we have this, uh, this problem, then and we are asked to find the principal stresses or the stresses here at k then we are going to cut a section and um, at that section we are going to expose the internal forces and we are to determine that internal force the value of the internal force because we are going to solve for the for the stresses okay so uh, because of that internal force i mean by just applying the equilibrium equations then we can solve for the actual uh, shear torsion and moment along y and moment along z and by the way here's our x-axis this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis so because of that then uh, we can actually draw the stress profile because uh, we have these forces right here so what's going to be the the stresses and instead of solving the geometric properties i uh, just write it here so we have the geometric properties we have the internal forces then we can solve for the stresses right so we have actual so we have a value of actual we have the value of transverse shear the torsion the moment along y and the moment along z and after that uh here's our k and this one is the h and this is a rotated uh, rotated illustration okay so right here at k this will be the stresses okay so we have the values right here but this will be the stresses so from that we are going to uh, to draw the to draw the state of stress okay so let me draw it here um, let me draw it here uh, let's just write solution or I think right here so solution is that uh, let's draw uh, drawing the uh, stress stress state at k okay, so it's like this um, here's our um, here's our stress at k and this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis Okay, and let's just draw it here. And it shows here that we have a we have a bending stress that's opposite direction to the actual stress. And um, I think we have solved that value and this is 107.4 megapascals and this is positive. So let's draw it here. Here is our x direction, and here is our y, and this will be our z. Okay, so from this figure right here, we have a normal stress of this one. And this is 107.4, so that's positive, that's uh, intention, 107.4. And... Of course, if there's a uh, force right here, a tension force right here, there's going to be an equivalent tension force in this side, 107.4. Uh, now, for the y-axis, we don't have any value. So, uh, 
we only have the sigma x but for the shear you would notice that we have a shear and we have an opposite direction and it's actually a positive shear that's going um, that's going upward so we have a 52.2 I mean the algebraic sum is just going upward so this is our shear uh, equation uh, sorry shear uh, illustration so this is 52.2 okay so let's draw this in two dimension and here's our x-axis and here's our y and right here we have the 107.4 this one is also 107.4 and right here we have a shear direction like this and this is 52.2 uh, this will be in I think this will be in megapascals all right so that's that's our state of stress and once we have this then we can actually solve for uh, We can solve for the principal stresses in the principal planes and the maximum uh, shear. Okay, so uh, constructing now or solving uh, now sigma average, sigma average and the R. Okay, so sigma average is just sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 and this one is 0 because we don't have. So sigma x is equal to... Um, 107 right this is 107.4 divided by 2 and this is just 53.7 and for the ranges this is this is sigma x minus sigma y all over 2 and this is squared plus shear x x y squared okay so this one again is 0 and we have a value of 107 divided by 2 squared plus this one is 52.2 uh, actually 107.4 squared and the value right here is 74.7 right so let's construct now constructing now the more circle Okay, so we have, um, let's plot the axis first, and let's say this is uh, 25, this is, f this is 50, and this is 75, and here is 100. Okay, so here we have um, a sigma average of 53.7, so this is 50, it's going to be somewhere right here. And our radius is um, is 70, uh, 74.7. So if this is 25, 50, so it's, here's 25, 50, so it's going to be somewhere, somewhere right here. Okay, and it's going to be somewhere right here. So the more circle would be, would look something like this. Okay, so here's our uh, here's our sigma. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, right here should be right here. Here's our sigma average, and here's our um, sigma max, and right here is our sigma mean, and right here will be our shear max. so let's now plot um, actually we can solve for this but we need to plot this condition so that we can obtain the um, the principal plane or the principal axis all right so first let's consider the the right the right face and we have a positive right here positive 107.4 so that's gonna be 107.4 so somewhere 
somewhere here. Right, so some somewhere here. So we don't know yet if it's positive or negative. Now if we check the shear stress, uh, this is producing a clockwise rotation. So uh, right here, this is a clockwise rotation and this is positive. So it's gonna be somewhere right here. All right, so that's gonna be our initial position. And this will be our um, top face. So from this initial position, uh, if we draw it, it's gonna be like this. And if we rotate it at some uh, at some angle, and this angle would be um, two theta p. Okay, so uh, the distance from this one to that, this is just equal to uh, this is just equal to to one o seven. Uh, actually it's not 107 the 107 is from this point to that point so 107 minus uh, minus this minus the the Sigma average and this will be um, 53.7 okay so he again the this point with respect to this uh, center this is 53.7 because the value of this uh, that's um, that's the given 107.4 and minus the um, the average stress okay, so that's gonna be 53.7 and the height right here this is the given 52.2 uh, right 52.2 okay so we have this right triangle and we can now solve for the So, uh, for the maximum shear stress or the uh, plane at which the uh, principal I mean plane at which the principal stress exists okay, so solving now for the principal uh, principal axis or principal planes we have tangent theta uh, actually tangent 2 theta P is equal to shear XY divided by this sigma x minus uh, sigma y divided by 2 and this will be um, theta p 2 theta p is just simply the inverse of the tangent and 52.2 right 52.2 divided by this which is equal to 107.4 107.4 divided by 2 so let's uh, write it here 107.4 divided by 2 is just equal to 53.7 so I guess it's just the same 53.7 um, okay so this is 2 theta p and what we get is 44 uh, 44.2 okay so 2 theta, 2 theta p is 44.2 and it has to rotate from this uh, it has to rotate clockwise to obtain the principal stresses okay so this is 2 theta p but in terms of the single angle this is just divided by 222.1 degrees okay and for the maximum shear uh, maximum shear this is uh, shear max is just equal to the uh, radius which is equal to 74.7 okay so finally we are going to express this or uh, express the answers in terms of sketches uh, or, or in terms of sketch so it's like this um, I'd like to sketch this in a different way from before right so here's our initial position and we are going to rotate this uh, at some angle and that angle is uh, actually 22.1 degrees okay so here's our initial position and this will be the final uh, I mean the position at which the principal stresses occur and um, right here at the principal stresses
um, if this is the right face, this is the maximum. Uh, here we have the maximum here, sigma max. Uh, this one is. I think we haven't solved that yet. Uh, let's just write it here. Sigma max. Forgot. One, two, three, four. So sigma max is just equal to uh, sigma average plus r, which is just equal to 128.4. And sigma mean is equal to um, sigma average minus r, and this is equal to minus 21. So sorry about that. Uh, we forgot. So right here, um, that's the reason why we we, we can't we can't uh, draw it here because we need the value of this. So sigma max, uh, it's gonna be right here. Sorry, it's gonna be right here. Right, this is one one twenty eight point four, and right here this is negative twenty one. Right, so if this is the right face, this will be our top face. Okay, so uh, this is positive. Right here is positive. So uh, this is going to be 128.4. So right here it's going to be 128.4. And for the top face, this is negative 21. So that means it's in compression right here. And th this is 21. 21 megapascals. Uh, I think this is megapascals. Okay, so that's our our solution. Okay, so that's one of the applications of this uh, more circle. All right, so I guess we are. Um, we are moving now to the what about if we have a triaxial uh, stress uh, I mean in 3D stress then what's going to be the Mohr circle so recall that in a 3D we have this uh, let's say we have this stress stress point and this is our X oh sorry this is our Y for example and this is our X and this is our Z now for a plane stress uh, or the oh, the more circle that we draw is just we only consider a plane, uh, a plane stress, meaning that we only consider the x y plane. Now, I mean the rotation along the x y plane or the rotation based on. Or I'd rather draw it here. So, uh, say we ha we can have rotation along the z, right, and we get a tr stress transformations along the x and y, but it's also possible that uh, we have a rotation along along the x axis and. Uh, the rotation along the x-axis will produce a um, will produce a stress transformation along the y-z axis, and it's also possible if we rotate here in the y-axis, then we will get a stress tra transformation along the uh, or for the x-z axis. Okay, so let's say we have we have here uh, a sigma sigma y, and we have a sigma x. And right here we have a sigma y, uh, oh, sorry, sigma z. Then what's going to be uh, the Mohr circle? So how does e how does the Mohr circle look like? So it's going to be something like this. Okay, so right here, uh, some value uh, since they are both in tension, then that's probably um, going to be lying al along the positive sigma. And let's say this is our our more circle all right so this is one more circle and this is a transformation representing the xy plane right so we are rotating in the uh, along the z axis and uh, that transformation would be represented by the more circle here now if we rotate that in um, in I mean, if we rotate this along the z, uh, along the x-axis, then there's gonna be. Although this is still positive, positive, 
so let's say we have this circle something like this right and this one uh, represents the transformation uh, in the YZ plane YZ plane okay so what about the um, the transformation if we rotate this along the Y axis so that's gonna be this circle So let's write here transformation along the x z uh, plane. Okay, so we solve. Um, you notice that we solve for this maximum values right here, and um, for the a three D three D conditions or three D situations, this will be our principal stresses. And instead of using the shear max. Um, the notation that they use is simply sigma 1 and then this one is sigma 2 and this one is sigma 3 so that indicates that sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 is greater than sigma 3 okay, so that's always the uh, the sequence so sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 and is greater than sigma 3 so uh, when we say in plane when we deal with xy plane um, the maximum shear is right here right but the absolute maximum shear the, the absolute maximum shear right here uh, this is actually uh, out of plane so there's going to be a different um, I mean this value this maximum shear value corresponds to the radius of the largest circle among the three all right so how do we solve for uh, for the principal stresses, this one, the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and the shear is by using this equation. So in our, in our lecture handouts, we have this. Uh, we have this in the table. So for the principal stresses, this is sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. Uh, where the sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 and is greater than sigma 3 and to find the sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 3 we need to go through this uh, equations okay so here's our our characteristic equation it just says here that the principal stress uh, raised to 3 minus i sub 1 that's the stress invariance uh, I sub 1 sigma p squared plus I sub 2 sigma p minus I sub 3 is equal to 0. So this is the characteristic equations. This is a cubic equation. And for a cubic equation, the number of roots, we have three roots for a cubic equations. So the roots, uh, the roots would, would correspond to the principal stresses. Okay, so how do we solve for this I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3? Okay, so for I sub 1, the, it can be solved using sigma x plus sigma y, or just simply the summation of all the normal stresses. And for uh, I sub 2, uh, second stress invariance, this, this is the summation of these terms. So sigma x times sigma y, uh, sigma x times sigma z, and sigma y, uh, the normal stress, the combination of this uh, normal stress minus the square of the shear stresses. So we have shear xy squared minus shear xz squared minus shear yz squared. And for the third uh, stress invariance, I sub 3, uh, we can compute this using a matrix uh, determinant. And actually, we this can be done easily using a, a, a calculator. Okay, and therefore, for the maximum, uh, for the absolute shear, that's going to be the maximum, I mean, whichever circle gives the maximum uh, value of the radius, then that's going to be our uh, maximum shear. Okay, so let's do... Uh, one simple problem regarding this um, 3D or triaxial stress or 3D state of stress. So right here, uh, for the problem, this is taken from the textbook by Pytel and and Kusalas, and this is sample 8.8. .8. So we have here the state of plane. Uh, actually, this is 
I don't know if this is a police stress. Okay, so this is uh, from the textbook. It says uh, it's a police stress, but I'd like to solve this using the the ones that we mentioned about the stress invariants. Um, we, because if we have um, shear stresses as well, this one is we only have uh, something like this. So we only have uh, right here, let's say this is 10 KSI, right? And this is 15 KSI. And here is 20. This is 20 KSI, but in uh, compression. Okay, so. If we have shear stresses right here, then um, I think the, the more general or a more general method is to use the, the stress invariance. Anyway, um, let's let's solve now. All right, let's solve. So, so the solution is that the characteristic equation is is given by this is given by this formula and uh, this is sigma p cube minus uh, the first stress invariant uh, sigma p squared plus i sub 2 sigma p and minus i sub 3 is equal to 0 okay so we are uh, we need to solve for the i sub 2 i sub 3 uh, i sub 1 i sub 2 i, th uh, I sub 3 so uh, let's write it here solving solving now the stress invariance okay invariance okay so i sub 1 is just simply sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma uh, sigma z and if we just simply add this so let's write then plus 15 minus 20 this is 5 All right so this is 5 ksi and for i sub 2 this is uh, we have sigma x times sigma y plus sigma uh, x plus sigma z plus uh, sigma sigma y times sigma z right minus shear uh, we have the, the shear values, uh, I mean shear terms right here, minus shear xy squared, shear xz squared minus shear uh, yz squared. And these are just zero because we don't have shear for now. So if we substitute all the values, we have um, 10 times 15 plus 10 times negative 20 plus 15 15 times negative uh, negative 20 and this is equal to negative 350 so this is negative 350 and the units is actually KSI squared okay because this is a product of um, KSI and for the I sub 3 okay so for the I sub 3 um, this is uh, you, uh, I mean, this is computed using determinants, and right here we have sigma x, uh, shear x y, and shear x z, and here we have shear x y and shear x z, and here is sigma y. This one is shear y z. This is shear y z, and here is sigma z. Okay, so let's um, let's substitute the values right here. So for sigma x we have ten, right? So this is 10 and the shear is 0 and right here this is uh, shear x shear x y uh, this is also 0 and our sigma y right here our sigma y is 15 and this one is negative 20 and right here is just 0 okay so to compute this um, uh, I think we we just have to to continue this computation in the next video. Alright, so see you in the next video.